Every electronic device we interact with has a computer chip inside. What goes into creating these chips? A transistor is a semiconductor device used to amplify or switch electrical signals and power. By connecting many transistors together, we can create a machine that can do many complex calculations. Since the very first computers, we've wanted to put more and more transistors closer and closer together. This not only allows the computer to take up less space, but by eliminating the distance between the resistors, we can increase the frequency at which calculations are being done. The shorter distance also allows for less resistance, allowing the computer to use less power. By etching a repeating pattern into a silicon wafer, we can create a sheet with many resistors on it. This is done through an optical lithography process that is similar to old school classroom projectors, where a light shines through a clear sheet with what you want to be shown drawn on it, and through a series of mirrors and lenses is projected onto the screen. By using a similar process, we can use lasers through a projection mask and a series of lenses to draw a pattern onto the semiconductor wafers that are covered in photoresistive material. The material becomes solid when it is touched by light. This allows us to wash away what's remaining and etch the semiconductor material underneath. Then copper is filled into the pattern that was etched into the semiconductor material to create the circuits. This general process has been around since the start of modern computers. The process has been refined and new technology has been introduced to allow us to create finer, more detailed etched patterns. Recently, however, we have started to run into a problem. We have gotten so small that the wavelength of the light we are using to etch the silicon semiconductors is the limiting factor. Traditional DUV lithography uses 193 nanometer deep UV light. This is produced by pointing a laser through argon gas, which is then focused and directed to where it needs to be on the chip through a series of mirrors and lenses. The obvious solution is to use a lower wavelength of light. We can already produce much lower wavelength light like x-ray machines, but they have a problem. Higher frequencies of light will simply go through objects, so we cannot focus them with lenses and mirrors. The new EUV lithography process, or extreme ultraviolet light, is the smallest wavelength of light that can still be manipulated with mirrors and lenses. There are many ways to create this 13.5 nanometer light, but the most practical way is to hit molten tin with a laser which turns it into plasma that emits 13.5 nanometer EUV light. This causes one problem. This is obviously a very sensitive process. If a speck of dust gets onto the silicon wafer or any of the mirrors and lenses, it can seriously mess up the process. To solve this problem, engineers at Trump created a device that shoots droplets of molten tin across an opening. Each droplet is shot once with a low power laser to flatten it into a pancake shape to increase the surface area for efficiency, and then again with high power laser to turn it into plasma and create the EUV light. In order to produce enough light, this process is repeated 50,000 times a second. Producing this extreme ultraviolet light is just the beginning of this challenging new process. The first issue is creating mirrors that can reflect the light. Since we have close to the limit of what can be reflected, the, mir the mirrors we use must be incredibly smooth. A normal mirror is nowhere near smooth enough to reflect the usable amount of light. In order to overcome this problem, Zeiss, a lens company in Germany, has created the world's flattest mirror. They did this by coating the mirror in extremely thin layers of silicon and molybdenum. But even with these mirrors, we can still only successfully reflect about 70% of the light, so the system needs to be designed in a way that minimizes the number of mirrors used. One mirror that is particularly important is the large concave mirror placed at the bottom of the area where the light is created. This mirror differs from the rest in a few key areas. It is by far the largest mirror in the system. It is also subjected to the most stress by the heat of the laser and rather than sun plasma tin near it. It also has the job of filtering out all of the other bands of light tint produces since we only want the 13.5 nanometer light going into the rest of the system. In order to do this, Zeiss has created a specialized coating that filters out all light outside of 2% of the 13.5 nanometers. The makeup of this coating is proprietary information. There is also the issue of heat. A large concave mirror needs to be a very precise shape in order to focus the light at an exact spot. 
If this mirror changes temperature, it could affect the shape enough to not allow the light to be properly focused for the photolithography process. To maintain a consistent temperature in the mirror, a water cooling system is used. Unlike most water cooling systems, the goal is not to remove a lot of heat from a heat generating component. The heat created by the laser hitting the tin is dissipated through a different system. The water cooling system here is primarily used for keeping the mirror at an exact temperature. While shooting molten tin across a space and hitting it with a laser allows us to have significantly less debris, we still have to get rid of that debris somehow. We do this by using hydrogen as a vacuum to pull the tin debris out of the chamber. We also do need to cool the chamber, so by flushing hydrogen gas through it, we can solve that problem too. This causes a few issues. First, the more hydrogen we put through the system, the more efficiency we lose. Also, if the hydrogen gets hit by the laser, it can break apart the H2 molecules into hydrogen radicals. If these collide with the tin, they will react and create more debris. With all these issues that need to be overcome by using this system, why did we choose to use tin? It was chosen for a few reasons. There are other materials that would create a usable wavelength of light. When atoms are hit with a large amount of energy from the laser and turn into plasma, they create light waves in different frequency bands depending on the material. Since we can only use light within 2% of the 13.5 nanometers, there are only a few op options that produce enough light in that range. This is called the conversion efficiency. While lithium, tin, and xenon all meet these requirements, tin was ultimately chosen because it has the highest conversion efficiency and is the most practical to work with. The debris created from tin is much easier to control than other options, and it is easiest to shoot molten beads of it consistently at 50,000 times a second. Despite these challenges, the engineers at ASML, with the help from Zeiss, Trumpf, and others, have successfully created machines capable of creating chips using EUV light at a commercial scale. The TwinScan NXE 3400C lithography system was the first brought to market, capable of making chips at the 7 and 5 nanometer nodes at production volume. Now ASML has improved the technology further in their new TwinScan NXE 3600D system capable of producing chips down to the 3 nanometer scale. ASML is the only company that currently creates machines capable of producing chips at this scale. Each machine can cost upwards of $300 million and a chip, and a chip fabrication plant would need anywhere from 10 to 20 of them, plus the massive clean room that these and all of the other machines that are part of the chip making process need to be stored in and cause it to be incredibly cost prohibitive for most companies to get into the market. ASML currently only sell these machines to three companies, TSMC, Samsung, and Intel. Any other company that needs to make a modern computer chip currently goes to one of these three to have them manufactured. For example, TSMC currently manufactures all of Apple's A-series and M-series chips, the ones in all Macs, iPads, and iPhones, as well as chips for tech giants like AMD and NVIDIA. At the end of the day, the key components that make up the computers that run the modern world are only able to be manufactured by one of three companies that can afford to buy the machines created by ASML, which is the only company in the world who makes extreme ultraviolet light lithography machines.